Let's check that out. It looks fun. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, the last video we actually mentioned uh, doing a gelatin taste test because uh, Mike had heard. I don't know if Jesse had heard as well. Um, yeah, I think uh, yeah. maybe somewhere. That gelatin uh, can strip the flavor from your beer. And it just so happened. I just brewed a Kolsch and uh, I wanted to hit one of them, hit them with gelatin. I was like, hey, it's a light beer. Um, you know, let's let's give it a go. So Jesse has no idea which of these contains the gelatin version of the beer. Um, we're going to do a triangle test, but there's one thing, and I can explain later, that I think will make one of the beers stand out as the odd one, you know, no matter which way we go. Yeah. So, and, and it has nothing to do with the flavor or the experiment that we're trying to check. So we're just going to try them side by side. Um, we'll have the white vessel poured into the left glass, and we'll have the blue vessel poured into the right. That seems reasonable. Yeah. There's a vessel. The nuclear, Wessel. Nuclear, <laughs> nuclear Wessel. Ooh, so, so, and if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and click on subscribe or like or something like that. And, uh, you know, catch all the videos. Why not? Uh, yeah, yep. it don't matter. Uh, no, there you go. You're doing the porn. So. Oh, I give you a there. That's actually, pretty. I could just say that the... Uh, one of them is carbonated better than the other one. So, okay. Yeah, that doesn't give away which one has the gelatin and which one doesn't. Oh, no. Yeah. And which one has the arsenic. I mean... <laughs> okay. So, now if you're... I'll let Jesse taste and just run down the recipe for you. And we'll post it in the show notes. Um, I call this one uh, the spy that came in from the Kolsch. Uh, this is an 11 gram... I'm sorry, 11 gallon batch. And talk about small batches. Do an 11-gram batch of beer. Yeah, that would Man. be... Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Cook it up in a thimble. <laughs> so, anyway, it's uh, 17 pounds of Pilsner malt, 2 pounds of wheat malt. And then I put 0.52 ounces of Hallettauer Blanc at 60 minutes, 1.91 ounces of Steering Goldings at 60, 0.52 ounces of Saz at 15 minutes, Fermented it out with uh, WLP029 German Ale. And it's about 21 IBU, 5.6% ABV. Uh, original gravity is 1049. And then final gravity is 1006. Oh, it's mashed at like 143 for 30 minutes. And then 158 for 15. So. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty. So let's, uh, I'm sorry, what kind of Kolsch was it? Or kind of yeast was it? Uh, German Ale, WLP029. okay. We moved the bottles, didn't we? Mm. Mm. Yeah. You had that one put over there. I had this one put over here. Okay. So the yeah. white one was in the left glass. Yep. Blue one was in the right. Yep. I hope when I edit this video, I don't notice that I messed that up. <laughs> Actually, the beer came out really nice. We We were trying it a little while ago. And it had a nice little cantaloupe flavor to yeah. it. I think that's kind of subsided some. Yeah, yeah, I'm not getting as much of it. I can't really tell much of a difference, to be honest with you. Yeah, the left one is a little bit sharper, um, but I think that's because mm. of the carbonation difference. Yeah. Because I know the head completely disappeared. I'm going to have to add some head retention. And I got to admit, I don't even think the clarity is that much different. Mm -mm. No. I'm not saying you shouldn't use gelatin for fining. I mean, I think the one on the right is a tad bit more golden. <clears throat> Just a touch, though. Especially when you're looking mm. top down. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Hmm. But, I mean, clarity-wise, they're... Yeah, they're both There's pretty no clear. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I can't. I don't think. I think that's been debunked at least as far as this goes. The sl the stripping of flavors. Oh, and and as I mentioned, it's eleven gallon batch. It was the same fermenter, you know, and I just racked two kegs off of it. So you know, brewed the same, mashed the same, all the way through. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't really think so. Mm, no. I mean, I wouldn't mind experimenting again. Um, I mean, do you even have a guess which one has gelatin and which one doesn't? Um, I'd say the right one is the gelatin. Well, why do you say that? Um, just from what you said before, it's just a little bit. I don't know. It might be just ever so slightly less hazy. Just ever so slightly. You're correct. Yeah, the one on the right has the gel. <clears throat> yeah. But like I said, I don't, I don't really pick out a flavor difference. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Except that little bit of sharpness, and like I said, I think that's from the, um, the higher carbonation. I could, yeah, that could yeah. be. And it didn't retain its head, but I was figuring that would be the giveaway if we did a triangle test. Um, oh, yeah. that one spent an extra week on CO two, and this okay. one's barely been two weeks. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you how long you had had the had them both um, in the, um, on gas and you know let this one clear out. I was wondering how long that one took. <clears throat> yeah, so and they both had time in the keg, like you know. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I don't know. I Maybe could, we should try on an instant beer, something that's just came out of the fermenter. So explain. Um, so it just comes out of the fermenter. Keg it, cool it, gelatin it, taste them. Oh, I see. Two days later. And this one's had gelatin in it for two days. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, explain the process here. So, you had, this one had gelatin in it for two days, and it's been on gas for a week? Um, so, this one, the one on the left, has been on gas for three weeks. Three weeks, okay. And the one on the right has been on gas for one week. Okay. It's had gelatin in it for two weeks. Or two, two days. Two, two days. days. Okay, yeah. I see. Interesting. But my process okay. was a half a teaspoon of gelatin, put it in a bowl. Uh, I used a quarter cup of water. I nuked it. Well, let it sit on the surface for 15 minutes just to hydrate, and then nuke it in bursts until it hits about 150 to 155. Give it a little stir, straight in the keg. Yeah, that's about what I do. Cap it, turn on the gas. Two days later, pour off the first couple of pints and dump them. Yep. Yeah, yeah that's pretty standard yeah. procedure. Yeah. So. But so what do you think? Do you think gelatin makes a difference in the flavor of the beer? Uh, I know it, I've seen amazing results with it with clarity. Um, yes. This beer, not particular, but not in particular. But I mean, who knows? Yeah. Well, I mean, cool. I mean, given enough time, Kolsch's typically clear out on their own. So, but uh, I've I've had some pretty remarkable success with it because I just started doing it, and I'm pretty impressed with it because for some reason I don't know if it's my mash my green but whatever that's i don't typically clear out too often yeah like my, there was a little bit of haze but using gel in boy it's crystal clear yeah yeah i generally have haze issues as well yeah, yeah. So. um i think probably the most success i've had is um using a floating dip tube mm -hmm. um, you know give it a little bit of time and the top of the beer clears first so you're pouring from the top and you know it, you're just chasing the the haze on the way down yeah and i actually was funny as i expected <clears throat> to get to the bottom and you'll be pouring the beer and you know a milkshake of yeah. gunk comes out and well i cut my tube a little short so it never touches that stuff yeah it just goes down as the oh can't reach it oh I see you're that. out of beer yeah yeah oh that's interesting so that yeah. worked out good yeah 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 what i've started doing is for when i ferment i use a floating dip tube in there and then I transfer into my serving serving keg, which is a short dip tube, yeah. short solid dip tube. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. It's just I was having some issues with the the dip tube kind of getting cockeyed or something, and it wasn't serving right. So so I just did it that way, and it seems to be working out pretty well so far. Yeah, nice. So, what? Anyway, that has yeah. nothing to do with gelatin or the. No, I don't care. It's homebrew, homebrew home related, brewing, whatever. Yeah. So. Hmm. Well, okay. that was shorter than I thought. Yeah, well, it's so. pretty straightforward. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, it wasn't going to be a lot of discussion. Like, nope, both good beers, no, yeah. no flavor difference. So yeah. there we go. So uh, I don't busted. know. Do you want to go into a chit chat episode <laughs> where we just shoot the bull shoot. about homebrew topics? Shoot the breeze. So first off, if you made it this far, congratulations. Yeah. So yeah, you're a stick with it type of person. <laughs> or we're on in the background while you're doing the dishes or yeah. something. Which is yeah. fine, too. So, and I got that bit from the apartment brewer. I've been watching quite a bit of his stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I, I bought a beer engine off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. 
And we have an upcoming video about a trip to the UK, and that's kind of what inspired it or pushed me over the edge. But um, the uh, apartment brewer has one and had a video about setting it up. And hey, those are some great videos. We'll put a little link down there, shout out to them. Uh, go check them out. Yeah. 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 But he thanks his viewers because he takes the time to make the video and you just watched it. So yeah. I was like, hey, that's a good tip. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Beer Engine. Probably, hopefully having some Beer Engine episodes in the future. Uh, we got the UK trip video coming up. Um, 12 beers at Christmas. And have we mentioned that yet? I don't So we started one of those, I think we did, but we started one of those mastermind groups with our homebrew club to brew this list of the 12 beers at Christmas. And uh, Jesse and I are both signed up. I think we have 8 or 9 people or 10 people think, yeah, a lot. Yeah, that are signed up. Um, and what we're going to do is basically make our own advent calendar, you know, exchange them. Yeah. Um, we don't have quite 24 people or won't have 24 different beers, but I mean, it sounds interesting. Oh yeah, no, for yeah. sure. And I did a caramel quad. Yeah, so, that looked really interesting. Yeah. He shared some pictures and yeah. it was, yeah, it looked like you were boiling caramel. There yeah, it was really it was neat. Crazy. Yeah. So, uh, and the recipes were inspired by Randy Mosier. Um, he bases them off of uh, recipes in his book, Radical Brewing. And the caramel quad is actually, uh, you take a pound of sugar and a pound of light malt extract and boil them until they turn brown and caramelize. And uh, yeah, the original gravity is 1.106. Um, I overshot by six points or eight points. Um, oh, mm. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't think anyone would complain. No, that's not yeah. going to be much of a... Much of a big deal. So, and boiling the sugar was really interesting. I'll put some pictures in and talk about it when that episode comes up. But, yeah. And you're brewing a... Uh, uh, Dunkel Weizenbach. Yeah, Dunkel yeah. Weizenbach. Yep. So, uh, is it spiced or anything? Or? Yeah, it's got spices. It's got um, typical Christmas, mm. Christmassy, you know, holiday season type spices. So, nutmeg and star mm. anise and so on. I can't remember off the top of my head. Sounds but yeah, good to me. It's, yeah. yeah, so I'm... Looking forward to trying. I've been wanting to do a Dunkel Ice. I'm like, yep, go big or go home. Yeah. I'll do a Bach. Yeah. And we got a whole list of the, like, I mean, some really great <clears throat> brews who signed up for all sorts of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, there's a bunch of other interesting recipes in there, too. Um, such as... the, Let's see, you did the caramel quad. Yeah, that's me. A spiced cherry adubel. Yeah, is, uh, is Mr. Baldwin. Yep. Yeah. Um, a spiced Dunkel Bites and Buck. Uh, a juniper rybok. Oh yeah, that sounds that's pretty crisp. good too. Um, yeah, they passed on the fruitcake old ale. So uh, far, at least no one did. Yeah, there's so, still time. So I guess the only reason, my only thought on that is like old ales, barley wines, or something like that. There's not really enough time to get a good one by the time we're probably going to be yeah, sharing the rest yeah. of these. So I can see people like I'm not going to do that. Maybe for next year. Now, yeah, if brew one, another one. Brew it now for next year. I'd be willing to hold on to somebody else's barley wine because we're doing oh, two sure. or three bottles each. Yeah. So I'd be willing to have one and go, no, it's young. Yeah. And then hold on to the other two till next year. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. You never know. So uh, Saffron Triple. Yeah. Tripel. Um, Christmas Groot. No one's, no one's no taken one's that, on one that yet. one yet. Yeah. And by the way, if you're in the club and you want to sign up for one of these... Uh, and by the club, I mean Brew Brothers of Pikes Peak Region here in Colorado Springs. Um, go ahead and uh, let us know. Drop us a line. We'll get you on the Discord. Um, honey Ginger IPA. Yep. Uh, Denny. Crab Apple Lambicky Ale. Hmm. No That's one's it. signed up for it yet, but I've actually got cases and cases of it from years and years and years. Oh, uh, did you brew? You know that Cranberry Lambic I do every year? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's from this. Is, yeah. Oh, okay. So... We'll see. Yeah, no, that's no, that, that qualifies. Uh, gingerbread ale is Axe. Um, spice bourbon stout, Darren, and then Abby Weitzen is uh, is uh, uh, Brad. Nice. nice. So yeah, some of those all sound interesting. Yeah. He'd mentioned this to me years ago. years ago, yeah. and I was kind of like, eh. <laughs> you know, he was like, <laughs> we should brew this. I was like, yeah, okay, I guess maybe. But now that I think I've, I'm a little bit more confident in my brewing yeah. skills now, okay, I'll, I'll invest the time and effort into something like this. Actually, it's a little secret. I've had a to-do item every year. To, since we started the Masterminds group, I've yeah. had a to-do item every year to start up to 12 beers at Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And every year I've been like, oh, I'm so busy. I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. So, but 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So those will be really... Maybe we should do a big get-together of the people. Because most of these yeah. people have been on the show anyway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, no, I was, I was assuming that's what was going to happen, is that we'd get together, do the final tasting, yeah. and then do the do the thing like we did with the, the lager experiment. Yeah. So. Speaking of get-togethers, Oktoberfest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're doing that again this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, I... There was a lot of interest initially. Yeah. Uh, not so much. But, um, yeah, again, if you're in the area and you're interested, you don't even have to be a member of Brew Brothers, really. Yeah. Sure. Um, let us know. Drop a comment. We can contact you and let you know when, where. Yeah. And what we're basically doing is we, uh, if you didn't see the video last year, what, what we're doing is we ask everyone who attends to bring a crowler or two of a local Oktoberfest or Fest beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we kind of call it out so we don't have duplicates and then we just taste them all and say who we like the best. Yep. And local being the greater Colorado Springs area. Yeah. So we're going to include divide monument. Yep. But not Denver. No Denver, no Pueblo. Yeah. So no macro brews. I'd be willing to include Pueblo. That's not the colors. That's, uh, eh, okay. That's not really that's in the true. spirit. If we wanted to do a front range, that's different. But yeah, then that'd that, be a lot more that opens up to, yeah. Well, okay. Only... And and we decided about uh, West Fax's tap room in the Springs qualifies that. I think so, since they're in the Springs. In the Springs, yeah. Yep, yep. So if... So, um, I guess Voodoo would qualify, too, if they have Oktoberfest. I guess, technically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably going to be an Oktoberfest stout. Yeah. IPA is something crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I just I haven't been there yet, yeah. so I'm I'm talking out my hat. But yeah. But uh yeah, what else? I think that's all we got coming up, right? Yeah. Um I recently brewed another Scottish export and the caramel quad, and that's about it. I was gonna do some British beers. You got anything coming up that you're thinking about brewing? Um oh, besides apart that? From this. No, I haven't really laid anything out. I just well, we just did the our club uh, barbecue, yeah, and then we did a little learn to homebrew day, which was we had pretty good, pretty good turnout for new people coming by and checking yeah. out. I think they're all homebrewers, but they're more novice, maybe you know. So they're yeah, they're brewers. both extract brewers. Yeah, yeah, so which is you know nothing wrong with that, but it was interesting to see the reaction and you know asking questions. Oh, so. actually, they both subscribed. Oh, so they might be watching. That's right, yeah. Because I, I talked him, gave him the URL, and we had two new subscribers. <laughs> he talked him into it means he twisted their arm. Yeah, Tied yeah. So welcome, yeah. Welcome to yeah. the, hopefully we see you at the club meeting soon. So, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I brewed another cream ale um, there. And I and brewed a pale ale, that, uh, a new the, hope pale ale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one turned out pretty well. And I had just kicked my cream ale that my wife lights out. Well, let's brew another Ooh, one. Time for a cream ale. Yep. Yeah. So, and then I had, there's, Max, one of the fellows in the in the club is renowned for his cream ale. So I tried his and I was just like, oh, mine's crap. <laughs> <laughs> this was really good. And he told me later on, he's just like, yeah, he's a different yeast. I don't know if I like this one, but so that's not my normal recipe. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh my goodness. Max is so crazy. Bro. Yeah, he is. I'm sure you're surprised he didn't blend it with something. He's no always kidding. blended stuff. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah, but it, yeah, it was it was very good. So, yeah. um, I think next time, um, so I got his recipe. So next time I'm gonna try that and see how it turns yeah. out. But yeah, other than that, I got nothing. Yeah, nothing coming up. Okay. Well, if you got ideas for the show, um, please go ahead and drop them below. If there's something you want to see, something you want to ask, or just let us know. Um, but until otherwise. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes. That's the case, baby. <laughs>